Car crash. Hi everyone, I'm Dilum. Hi. Oh, caught my hair. It's not <laughs> a good day for me. Hi, and I'm Sandra, and today we are starting with our coffee break. Uh, so maybe maybe you can explain. I yeah, so we... every few episodes we just want to like have a talk together, talk about what's going on in our lives, what's going on in our minds, and see where the conversation takes us. All right. And uh, so... yeah, how have you been doing? I'm okay. I think, uh, yeah, I have a hard time right now because I have exam. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of work. Uh, so right now I'm writing uh, this, uh, a dissertation, uh, a thesis, and also a lot of things. So it's very, very, uh, a lot of work. So, yeah. And with this weather, it's just uh, fucked up to sit, to sit uh, at home, actually. Uh, I was stuck at work yesterday, and I was also like, I want to go outside. Yeah. And we can't. Well, I can go outside to have a bike ride, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, today I'm going uh, to go with a bike, I think, 40 uh, kilometers. What? Like yep. I want to see how that ends. Okay, okay. I've so, been sitting inside, like, I told myself I wasn't going to work today. Uh -huh. and I've done nothing but work until now. And now mm -hmm. I'm working again on a podcast, so that's just great. And then right. everything in between with not going outside. I've also been, like, using a lot of dating apps again, because... Well, that's a form of human contact. Okay, okay. And it was like a guy that was like, yeah, he's, he was, we were talking and he was quite interesting. And then he was like, I was saying something about religion and he was like, oh, but religion doesn't exist. And I was like, no, religion does exist because as humans, we create meaning. And as soon as we start doing that together, mm -hmm. like, we kind of create religion because religion is nothing more than creating meaning together. So if we want to be human, we also have to have religion, I think. Am I right? Yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, uh, religion is just uh, the thing you believe in, you know? Mm -hmm. So the meaning you have is actually the thing you believe in, uh, like, uh, for example, if you believe in a tree, so this is just the meaning that the tree has to uh, like the religion, you know. So uh, if you say that uh, the trees are gods, yeah, so the trees get the other meaning. Okay. So this yeah. is how, how we create uh, the meaning, I think. But how does like god fit in of all of that because maybe we can't explain some things and then we have to look at like this entity that is uh unfathomable of uh, that can be explained and then we have like an, an easy scapegoat to be like oh we can't explain why we fall in love and stuff and then we have like oh yeah. but that, that's god and his unexplainable ways maybe it's mm -hmm. like religion is maybe also like the antithesis of meaning because it's like oh we can't explain it so we're just going to blame god or or explain uh -huh. it to god yeah when you uh, it's always like this you, when you can't explain things like for example uh let's take art so um artists are uh people who uh, i think that that's only my meaning that they are like looking to things uh, and they look at things like very um, uh, not subject like a uh, subjective but uh, actually very objective because they know how how things uh, are made how the how is uh, the system going uh, in our life or oh, and something like this you know why why is that because when we create something, that is what actually uh, not exists. 
So if you want to create something, you know, uh, you you need to know what's not real and what's real. So uh, what I wanted to say about that, what the fuck? But are art uh, so you're saying artists are objective? So artists are subjective. In, oh, okay, because I was like, artists are objective? No, no. No, no, I think artists are subjective in uh, the creation, but they are uh, objective in the life. Because when we create things, we believe in art, yeah? So this is our uh, religion. We know that uh, art is actually uh, almost everything. So the objectivity uh, of life um, come into the sub subjectivity of art. I don't know, or this is... Uh, is I, that I didn't know we were in a philosophy class. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I know, okay. That's hard to, that's hard to think like this, but I think religion is, well, I, my religion is art. This is, uh, this is the only thing I believe. That sounds like a Lady Gaga song. My religion is art. <laughs> By my art. By my art, yeah, we still have to make the t-shirts. <laughs> no, but then like, is the artist the god of the artwork or, because who was, do you remember like the guy that said like, or the idea that an artist has to be a genius? Yeah. Do you think that an artist has to be a genius? I don't think that an artist has to be a genius. I don't think that. But an artist has to be a god of his own work. I think that's, that's the truth. Because, um, okay, when the viewer is looking at an art artwork, yeah, maybe at that uh, point is the viewer the the god of that work because because he sees what he want what he can see yeah mm -hmm. we cannot see what our viewers are thinking in in those in their minds but it's still something how how can i say there is no there is no viewer it can change uh, your work, you know. There is no viewer because if you make a uh, if you make an artwork uh, and you give the meaning for that uh, artwork and you like uh, write a, a, I, uh, you write a, I don't know uh, artist statement about that mm -hmm. about your work. The viewer can uh, can say other things that he sees, but you still. Uh, the god of you are the maker so actually yeah i think you are the god of uh, but i think art. that still viewers contribute a large part of to the artwork because an art an artwork isn't finished until it is viewed by an audience because they also ha are free to make their own interpretations about the work yeah yeah, yeah i of think course. that even saying that like we determine or the artist determines the entire artwork is kind of limiting because um it doesn't allow for an expansion mm -hmm. how do yeah i was thinking about something but i lost it again i'm very adhd today <laughs> no i think i don't know the viewer well from my side yeah i know that the viewer can see a lot of other things in my work and now uh, I'm uh, using a lot of mirrors in my work so they are they they see a reflection in the mirror mm -hmm. and they see uh, the only thing that they can see you know I cannot ch change that thing but the but this is th that was my idea to uh to introduce the reflection of uh of what uh, the viewer can see into my uh, maps you know into my uh paintwork uh that is done on on the mirrors 
So I don't know. I think I think that uh, an artist is still the god of of the artwork. I think that maybe that may be a dangerous way to think or something, because you think? yeah, because I, I don't know. know. How, if we think about like God being the the escape, so we don't have to explain things. Mm -hmm. So God is this randomized element to our interpretation of things, mm -hmm. and then. We are the god of our own art. We are the creator of, of our artwork. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to stay on the same level of the audience, mm -hmm. or maybe like maybe not on the same level, but on uh, on a level that's adjacent to the audience. Because if you go like you are, first of all, we're not creating randomly. We have a set ID that we have that we want to translate yeah so we're not above like having to explain what it's about or we have a certain we have a certain duty to the audience to make a strong artwork that translates the ideas that we want to translate mm -hmm. and then if you as an artist uh cut yourself off on the audience and are like oh no but your interpretation is wrong no, their interpretation is right. They have their own opinions and they have their own views. And if you as an artist are like telling people they're wrong in their interpretation, then you did your job wrong because you somehow did not translate your ideas well or uh, you didn't see all the possibilities of the translation you put out there. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm like... I don't really talk about um, pushing people to see something what you made. I, uh, that's not what I mean. Uh, I mean, for example, at the, when I have an exhibition, uh, I would like to be there only at the opening, actually. I don't want to stand there all the, you know, uh, all days when my is when my work is hanging on why is that because i want actually i want to uh yeah i want that my viewer would would see uh something without me like i i am uh, i'm not important in that uh, the work must to say something what what I would say with my with with my voice, you know. So yeah. that's not that's not uh, the thing that I said. I said like, okay, the viewer is coming into the the exhibition. My work is hanging on, but I'm not there. Yeah. So the uh, there's uh, let's take hundred viewers. Yeah, they saw my work. They made hundred of meanings uh, they have for for my work. Mm -hmm. But the work is not going to change because of the viewer. But what is the work? The work is the, work is the thing that I made. And my idea still, uh, still stays my, my idea. You know, you can say, of course, I don't, I never push the things. You can, you can even say, oh, I don't know. Uh, for example, I don't see uh, maps in your work. Mm -hmm. It's okay for me, it, and I'm I'm very agree with that mm -hmm. because they are just forms and colors, for example, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but if I uh, uh, take the inspiration from maps, for example, and uh, I I'm trying to introduce that in my work, then this is it. That that's all. And I write something about that. For example, in the in the you know uh, brochure brochure. How to say that? Yeah, in the, in the handout. Handout. Yeah. Uh, for exhibition, for example, they they read that. Yeah. And this at that point, this is the like the right for uh, for the viewer to uh, decide. You are gonna listen to to my text, like uh, to my meaning about my work, or not? 
you know if people don't naturally see like the 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 maps that you use for your work is it then mm -hmm. important to mention them or is it even important to use them i don't i don't understand that question sorry because you're like oh um when the viewer sees my work and they don't uh, think about maps and stuff, yeah. is it then important that you use the maps or mention the maps in a text? No, 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 no. that's not important. That's, that's not important at all. But I'm like, I'm like stuck with that idea that... But for you, I'm not talking for the audience, I'm talking for you. Is it then yeah. important that you use them? No. No, I, I, that's, that's not important for me. The important, the, the important thing for me is that if one viewer from 100 viewers would see what I see, I'm, I would be very happy, of course. But if they see uh, something else, I'm also very happy. And actually, sometimes when I'm standing with my viewers and they are talking about my work without my explanation, mm -hmm. I start to see new things in my work. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, but it's still, yeah, I don't know. Don't it's you still. Think they have to see like a basis of what you're trying to say. Like, for example, they're looking at your work and they're like, "Oh, it's about uh, birds and sex and reproduction." Yeah. And uh, and those things, which is something that you're totally not like thinking about yeah. in your practice. Do you think that's a problem? No, no, I, I already had uh, such of comments actually. But then don't you think like... Did, didn't you your, had... Your translation gets lost? I don't know, I don't think because that my think translation... Like a careful, I think it's a careful balance between like leaving the audience open to their own interpretation, but then having something that they and i'm not saying everybody's going to see it because at some level you have to be able to first of all read an artwork in general before you can really look at art well for example i was thinking about it yesterday and i was like uh because i'm going to probably teach uh like uh, first graders and second graders uh mm -hmm. next year and I have to learn to have Good luck. Look at art and have them think about art and culture. And okay. I wanted to open with like, um, my classes are going to be very easy because if you had, for example, a math uh, yeah. test and you could uh -huh. have the book open next to you, what would happen? You would be able to have all the answers. And that's exactly yeah. what we're going to do in this class. You're going to have uh -huh. the artwork in front of you and mm -hmm. if you can read the artwork, they can just answer all the questions I'm going to ever ask you. But okay, first, that's cool. You have to be able to read the artwork because if you have your math book open next to you, but you don't understand the language that it's written in or the, what the symbols and everything means, then you yeah. can use it to answer your test. So what I want to learn then is how to be able to Look. read an artwork yeah. so they can answer the questions for themselves without having a lot of like theoretical background there's a part of it that has to be theoretical like you have to kind of know what people taught in medieval times and you have to know mm -hmm. who uh Euronymous Bosch is for example and stuff but if on a fundamental level you can just look at an artwork and see what an artist is trying to tell you mm -hmm then you can already do a lot with art. So as soon as you have reached that level of understanding and that way of trying to look at art, uh -huh. then you can start reading artworks. And I think it's then important for the artist. If you want to be a good artist, you have to be able to get a message across with your artwork that is kind of universal for a lot of people. Like if everybody sees your artwork in a completely different way, like, one of them thinks like, oh, this person works a lot with sex and birds and, uh, and making babies. And then another person is like, oh, this work is about uh, consumer culture and Coca-Cola. And then a third person is like, oh, no, this work is about like uh, the 
about architecture and empty space, then you mm -hmm. have like all these people thinking different things and you in the end didn't really tell anything. Okay. Because as an artist, you have an idea that you want to translate. And if, ever, if nobody sees the, the idea that you wanted to translate, I think you made okay. a bad work. But as soon as you get this general idea across, and then in that general ID, people are able to make their own interpretation. I think uh -huh. then you've reached the point of a good artwork. And I think I've struggled a long time. I'm talking a lot right now. No, um, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I uh, think it's very interesting. I've, I've struggled a lot with like, and that's something they taught us at uh, Luca was like, okay, so what are the ideas you want to translate? And then you have to talk about your artwork and the, ideas you wanted to translate and I think they wanted to check that they also felt that naturally without our explanation and then gave feedback on us and I think I've I was stuck a long time with like not being able to universally kind of translate my ideas to my work mm -hmm. but then recently I've started to notice that with like okay I fine-tuned what I want to say with my art and what I want to do with my art and that I even mm -hmm like on the dating apps again, that I show my work to people and that, um, that they're always like, because my work is about like the subjectivity of meaning yeah. and um, how we can create our own ideas and how that kind of also works with text and images and that these things have uh, kind of, well, they both have, I think, universal meanings or like if you show Jesus on a cross to Christian people they like immediately get like oh it's about Christ and sin and and him dying for our sins and stuff like that but then if you mm -hmm. show it to like an African tribe that has never seen Jesus Christ on a cross they're like oh this is just a weird guy that is being tortured and stuff so that's one thing and then you have individual meanings like if I show an image of a son it, some people will be like oh um it's uh, it's hot and it's not pleasant and um yeah i don't like going out in the sun and then other people think about vacation and uh, then someone else is like oh that's how my crops grow because there's a lot of sun and so that's the individual meaning but then you also have this universal meaning of like it's a source of energy it gives off heat it makes things grow that's like something i think everybody knows and understands yeah so that's that working together kind of shows how subjective meaning is when I try, that's what I'm trying to show. And then all these guys on these dating apps were like, oh, I like the work, but I don't really understand because there's, I very much see that there is a meaning or that mm -hmm. you want to say us something, but I don't really understand it. And I'm like, exactly, that's the point. It's yeah. like, you don't have to understand the meaning or you have to create it yourself. It's up to you. And I think then a lot of people are, again, that don't really know how to read art, that they're like, oh, yeah, I get that there's a meaning, but I, I just don't understand it. It's like, no, you're completely free to not understand it, and you're completely free to make your own interpretation. As long as you notice that it's like, it's about that sense of meaning and that it is or isn't present. But actually, that's the thing that I, I meant, you know, uh, about about the god, uh, the the thing that artist is the god of the artwork mm -hmm. so okay you have the viewer he's creating the meaning for your work yeah mm -hmm. like you said uh if you if you uh created a work and uh one from 100 viewers understands actually what it is like like almost the same like you actually wanted yeah and the rest of people actually see nothing or or maybe see completely other things you said that uh then it's, uh, it's a bad artwork mm -hmm. so that's actually what I, I i meant so if you're making a good artwork yeah your idea and the thing you want you wanted to show uh, touch everybody mm -hmm. you know and so still your idea you wanted to show is the god of 
of what do, what did you wanted to show you know so you are you are the maker of that idea you show them if for example uh let's take uh kandinsky mm -hmm. kandinsky really wanted to show the meaning of colors what color uh is doing for uh, for our body how we feel the color uh how how actually we feel the form and what what is uh even uh, balance balance yeah uh between the forms mm -hmm. so his work is good i think i don't know i i think his work is good and i see actually what he wanted to say to say i uh i read the bo uh, his book about all, all those things colors and forms and so on and um uh, i have the feeling that i just can change his mind like maybe i disagree with things but this is his idea you know mm -hmm. it's not like he's pushing me to think like he's thinking i have the other uh, meaning you know but he still he has one thing he wanted to show and he's the god of that I cannot change that, you know, even if I have the other meaning. So but this is what... But if we think about like God being this device or this person that works in unexplainable ways and that we can't explain and that creates things because they can be explained. Yeah. Or is only like, only he understands. I think we are the anti-God because we create things and our goal is for as many people as possible to understand it. Yeah. So I think that artists are maybe not gods of their own work, but the anti-gods of their own work. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's, maybe that's a better, uh, uh, better name. We like anti. We're like anti-government, anti-God, anti-religion. Uh, anti we're anti everything uh -huh. it would be it would be nice to to live in uh, the world like this no anti god title of our next exhibition Ooh, yeah oh maybe maybe we can really do it uh we like have so many ideas for the next exhibitions yo yeah i i'm uh i'm also have some so well uh i don't know what what okay what do you think do you think that the artwork needs to speak for for himself yes okay and then the other question we didn't we say like if you have to write like a, a whole page a whole a4 about your work for people to understand it, you're doing a bad job. Yeah, that's true. But like if I wanted to write texts, I would have become a, a writer. If you want to write texts, you have to become a writer. Mm -hmm. There has to be, I think it's important also for, uh, for let, yeah, I can't pronounce the word, to become legitimate in the art world, you have to show that there's like uh, uh, a foundation that you know what you're talking about. And I think for that, it's important uh, to show people uh, like, okay, so you have this artwork and um, you can look at it and you can understand it that way. But you also have to show like, oh no, but I know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Because okay. it's subjective while these texts can become objective. And with that objectivity, people can more measure how well you're doing or something mm -hmm. so you, okay like if you are legitimized or whatever and then you have to print all these pages so people can understand your work i think you're doing a bad job yeah i think i and i'm agree with that legitimize, you have to be like and that was what one of our teachers also taught us like uh half an a4 page because also people can't because there are so many artists trying to make it and then people don't have time to read like five pages of text about your work just like half an a4 
quick and easy read. And if you have to use more words to describe your work, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I would like to ask the other question uh, that deals with this uh, conversation. But first, I would like to ask you to explain for our viewers and listeners uh, the work uh, from one guy. He sent uh, his work. So the, the idea was that I and you as the creators would be the artwork. You know yeah. that? Yeah. So explain this and then I'm going to ask. Um, I have to explain the work? Yeah, yeah, with the, his oh, idea yeah. because I'm not that good. In Am I allowed to? Are, does he allow for us to like mention I, the, Because he wanted no, he wanted no like mention of his work in the space except for like the title of the work and his name and that's it on the ground floor. But know. we will not say his name so he don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. But they'll know what, but if we tell them, they'll like notice that we're doing the performance. I don't know if we're allowed to. Shit. Maybe we should not do it. Wait, what's the question? The question was, so... Let's make it more confusing. Okay, so the question was, uh, do you think that this work, uh -huh. his idea, uh, is speaking for himself? That was the question. But if the listeners don't know the idea, so they would not understand what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. What are we going to do? Um, yeah, it's hard to like say why I think it speaks for itself because we're not allowed to talk about the work, which is, I think, like speaks for itself in that way because that's kind of what he wanted to accomplish. Or maybe I can do a fiction to like uh, improvise right now another performance. So, wait, I'll try. So uh, the artist wants Sandra and I to um, kind of alter or make different how people see us during the opening of the exhibition. As curators. Yeah, as curators. Yeah, okay. And I think, so, like, people will notice what we're doing. They just won't notice why. And I think that's exactly what he wants to accomplish. Like, having this small but noticeable change within an art context, within a clearly defined art context and persona, okay. that he's... Yeah, that, that alteration will be noticeable and will make people think. And I don't think it's necessary for, for us to announce what it's going to be, because I think that would diminish the work in some way. I don't know. At one, at certain point, I, 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 to, uh, I think a lot about that work. So uh, at some point, I thought, I don't know, or actually people would uh, mention this because we uh, we both are a little bit w weird already, yeah? If So if we would do some weirdness in our opening as curators, I think people just, uh, for uh, if, if fortunately people who knows us, I think they would just uh, think that we are drunk or something. Really? Okay. So I don't know. I I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm like balance, balance with the, that idea or that work is really speaking for for himself. So there know. is this I, small like keynote. There's these small key things that are like present, so people can kind of figure it out for themselves. Like we have to carry the the script of the performance in our pocket, and that's visible. And then it's mentioned on the on the floor plan like uh, his name and then the title of the work and then performance by the curators and people yeah. know where the curators so they'll be like oh okay when is it going to be the performance and blah 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 and then at the end of the night I think some people will at least be like 
oh, but there was never this performance, but they were acting weird. So was that the performance? And then it makes them think about what happened. And I think that's the point of the work. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, it I think just... that's why it's an interesting work. Like the work from Tino Segal. I think that's his work. You were, oh yeah, you weren't with us in Paris. I think it was, yeah, I think it was Tino Segal. That was like... In Paris? Yeah, you weren't with us. Oh no, was, I didn't, Dylan. yeah, I didn't came. Yeah, no, shit. but that was one of the most interesting works I've ever seen. It was just like the whole of Palais Tokyo, the whole exhibition was uh -huh. like empty. Okay. And uh, there were just a lot of people walking around. And okay. then all of a sudden, a group of people started like moving through the space in a specific thing, in a specific way, or started singing or started running across the room. And then you had oh, these I Yeah, I saw that, I saw that uh, performance on YouTube, uh, actually. Well, that's weird because you weren't allowed to film. No, 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 it's I on to our film Vimeo. The and I was like, asked by someone like, oh yeah, you're not allowed to film. Like, I was like, oh fuck. No, or Vimeo, I think. Uh, I think just uh, the uh, camera uh, man or something from the artist uh, filmed that, uh, yeah, that That's performance. That's also weird because he, want, he doesn't want his work to be documented. What the fuck? Yeah, because I talked or to him. Or maybe I saw something, uh, something else. She was like, like, oh yeah, uh, because he's like, uh, he, Segal, like, he doesn't want the written um, script for his performances. Uh, he doesn't want uh -huh. documentation of his performances. He doesn't okay. want to be uh, directly mentioned during the exhibition of the performances. And if you, you can buy his work, but uh, the only thing you get is like a, a notarized document that says that you bought the performance uh -huh. and there's no written uh, script of the performance. He verbally tells the person that bought the performance what has to happen. And the verbal instruction is the only thing that exists. Holy shit, that's cool. No, so, yeah, I think I saw, I saw something else then. That is or quite similar. Okay. I have gotten. And I thought it was really interesting of like selling a performance that is in every way does not exist except that it happens and that it was like verbally told and then words again disappear when you spoke them. So that I thought it was really interesting. And then I saw the same kind of thinking in, in the artists that were showing and his performance, but in mm -hmm. another line of thinking because Segal is a lot about like social interactions. And then ours is also about social interactions, but more in like, an art context like the curators and the artists change. Uh -huh. I don't know why, actually that's maybe not so similar, but it, um, it remind me the uh, uh, performance where uh, only women uh, could uh, go with the Cinderella to take a coin or something, you know? Oh yeah, uh, the performance in the Russian pavilion at the Venice Yeah, Bay. in Russian pavilion, yeah, that yeah, one. Only women could like go pick up a coin and a man had to go upstairs and like sit in these uh -huh. punishment benches from the church. And yeah, I don't know, that's, that's not the same, but I don't know, just, just I thought about that. It's also that's... a performative aspect. Uh -huh. That was also cool. The artist or the viewer becomes a real part of the artwork. Like the uh -huh. same Marina Abramovic, where the performance only exists as like the artist is present, the the artwork only exists when she is faced with another person. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then comes Ulai, and then she cries. Oh my God! I'm just I can't. I I'm just can't. I'm about it now, because if you Why? read like, her biography, and um, I think. I think at least part of it was planned. You think so? I think so. I could. I be don't wrong. think so. No, I don't because I. Uh, you you uh, uh, read the book. Uh, Welcome to Walking through the walls. And then again, if I was Abramovich, I would not have cried. 
okay because of he that book because bad. you know yeah he he was bastard but <laughs> he was bastard but that's but. like trying to explain why a serial killer does things it's like but he was abused as a child oh yeah that's okay he just killed 13 people <laughs> no okay look just i think uh when he came to her performance it was for me like he's doing another performance for him it was not like a romantic bullshit you know to come and to cry like like this also the way he like faced her was like very like a bit toxic masculinity like affirming that he's there for her and blah 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 and he's like no she's a strong independent woman now you don't have to be there it was a yeah, touching moment just... but i'm also skeptic about it you think i yeah. don't know i i even I... outside if it was if it was planned or not and stuff i i just think like the way i think it was a touching moment in any way but then at the same time i have this like because there was this instant that the way he looked at her, it was like, yeah, I'm here. And it's like, dude, like, no. Like, he was like the strong man that was there. And then the woman had to become emotional because her long lost lover is there and shit. And it's like, um, the way he treated Marina when they broke up and stuff, and like all this cheating and stuff, I'm like, uh-uh. Now you don't have to be the patron saint for to be there to help her be emotional and stuff. Yeah, but can't you didn't you ever uh, uh, did uh, like a mistake in your life? Also 26, and so I haven't been through all everything they've been through no 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 but just didn't you ever uh made a mistake in your life and after five years or something you realize uh, how how stupid you was like like you know yeah. and you would like uh if you if you could uh take the time back you would say sorry immediately or just don't do yeah, that I the feeling that he was there to do that to he do, was very, to do what? What? To do what? To say sorry. Oh, so you you didn't have that that feeling? No. He was what very. The fuck? He was very cocky sitting there. He did not have an apologetic aura around him. Of course, as as I feel it. Oh my God! Damn. I, w I want you to have watch problems the video. with your feelings, man. I you, want you to just... watch the video together, and I want to show you the moment where you see him looking. And now I'm being just a critical bitch, but I'm allowed to be because I'm a homosexual. And um, <laughs> and I, there is this moment where I feel like he's just being cocky sitting there. Do you know what cocky is? No. Uh, arrogant. Or nay, a you, very you fool are, of himself. You're you're really crazy, I think. Arrogant. He was I'm like allowed his to eyes. Have an opinion, Sandra. <laughs> okay, but he was like screaming with his eyes, like, "Oh my God, I really miss you!" And what the fuck is, what the fuck what? actually really? happened with us? I yeah. see something completely different. Oh my God. Okay. I see something absent. Didn't he die recently, Ulai? Yeah, he died. Mm, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> well, I, uh, I don't think he's a bad person. I just think he made some bad decisions that he never owned up to. As did I. Well, look, I uh, actually watched the, the uh, interview only with him. So... Um, Which, what interview? Sorry? Which interview? Uh... Fuck, the longest of YouTube. I don't know how it's called, but it's just interview with Ulai, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. So uh, it, it was like with a, a black background, so you can watch it. So uh, when he's talking, I'm really feeling like that guy is really arrogant. And like uh, that guy has a very strong meaning. And um, 
he was like uh, he okay. told about his uh, uh, work from uh, when when he was very young. Mm -hmm. So uh, he even uh, stole a painting from a museum and called the police uh, to bring the curator of the museum to his house to take that uh, painting back as a critic, like something something like this. So so he was like actually very bastard but when he started to talk about uh, marina mm -hmm. he like personally like his face and his eyes and everything he was like uh a bit softly you know i don't know i see, i just see that i saw was, toxic masculinity in him and I'm not the biggest fan of him. I don't know. I, 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 you're I, I to don't appreciate an artist as an artist, and then you're also allowed to appreciate not appreciate the artist for be as an as a person. Mm -hmm. Like that's well, also like because for example, there's this also now this whole idea that like how do we deal with uh, artists in like the biggest sense like. Uh, visual artists, musicians, musicians <laughs> people who make music, um, uh, illustrators, architects, all this. How? Because there are some scandals have been brought to the light with the whole Me Too thing. And now you have like, for example, Michael Jackson, who is like, has been accused of being a huge pedophile. But then how do we deal with listening to his music and appreciating his music are we still allowed to because there was this whole question about it but it was never answered like we still have michael jackson on the radio even do even though it appears that he like raped ch several children mm -hmm. and then how, because then uh a friend of ours also uh ines also said like oh yeah but you have this artist she um we were talking about um Anthony Gormley, and she was like, oh yeah, but you know he killed his wife, right? And I'm like, he did what? And then we went online, and we think she might have been wrong and that she was talking about other artists that she couldn't remember. Then the whole thing is like, how do you look at the work of an artist who is, for example, a great, uh, who's a rapist or who mistreated women and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um... One, I think I remember a day when I show uh, the paintings for my family. I think for my family or my friends. Okay, uh, doesn't matter for who, but I show the paintings from Ernst. You know Ernst? Who? Ernst. Ah, Max Ernst. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... We learn even uh, by Hildeman, I think, that he was yeah. taking drugs. So he was taking drugs to paint. Mm -hmm. So first they just uh, watched the paintings and thought, okay, cool, blah, 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 blah. And then I said that he was taking drugs to paint things Except like that. Absent and, and drank absent. And I think that you can see that also in his painting yeah so so actually the thing uh, uh the moment when i said that he was uh, using drugs to paint uh, they started uh like not not like that uh paintings actually because but i don't see the problem with like taking drugs i don't know i, I think don't like, think you're not har harming anybody if you take drugs and then you hit your wife and then you make paintings that's a problem <laughs> because you're harming someone else if you're taking drugs and then make paintings you're only harming yourself so that's okay like, fine all right but <laughs> you, you, can, you can harm yourself just don't harm anybody else but it's you see i see i see that like cheating you know because right. because it's form of experience it's not cheating no, it's because it's an F effect, you know, if you take L LSD, you know, you start to see uh, octopus uh, hands uh, in uh, like in 
uh, in place of your own hands, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you see your hand as an oct octopus uh, uh, hand, you know, so, and then p you paint that, this is just the illusion that, that you create. And if I go to, because uh, I want to make work about uh, the Forum Romanum and about uh, Roman ruins, is it that, yeah. that I go to see the Roman ruins in Italy? No. Then why, why is it what, LSD to see a weird world cheating? Because you can't come up with it by yourself. I think it's an extension of an experience and that it is because uh, taking LSD is something, not something that you can achieve naturally. Mm -hmm. And I think that taking, for example, LSD, I'm not advising to take LSD. I am very anti-drug. And um, you should always um, consider uh, what is legal in your country and not take <laughs> what is not legal. I am uh, trying to avoid a lawsuit here. Uh, don't take LSD, uh, don't take drugs. And um, if you do want to take drugs, make sure they are very safe and don't take drugs. So we're cutting out the whole uh, what drugs. Is drugs. Our stance is don't do drugs. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> just bleep this entire section. No, but taking LSD is I think not cheating. We can we can talk about LSD, right? I don't think don't do LSD. I don't think so. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs, kids, and don't okay. do art school kids also because yeah, it's don't also do drugs. Don't, don't do art school kids. We're getting so off topic. No, I think it's okay. It's no, no, no. I don't think it's okay to do drugs. I don't do drugs. We'll make this video 18 plus on YouTube and have and say that it has sensitive materials. But I don't think it's cheating. Don't do drugs. Because taking drugs is just an experience that you can't create naturally. I think it's, it's cheating. Just opening up another world, another dimension. And and a dangerous way to uh, see something else. Well, I think that you are a bad, I think that you are, a, maybe it's uh, too hard to say, uh, it's, it's too hard. Uh, but then you get maybe dependent on the drug to make art and then you have a problem. No, I think that if you're taking drugs for your art, then you are a bad artist because you can not do that with your own head. Then you are just just a no. It's still shitty. your own head. It's just uh, something that enhances enhances your your perception. And now we can talk about fantasy. So, do you think that fantasy, fantasy has boundaries? So, do you think that fantasy you can you cannot uh, like um, uh, take ideas from your just own fantasy? You just you just need to. Think deep. That's all. You don't. You don't uh, need drugs or something to get some uh, fantastic things. You know. I don't fucking understand. People are just can't take good ideas with his own head. I don't. Then you are a shitty uh, artist. I, I'm. I'm just like. Uh, I think like I this. I don't think so. But we are allowed to like have different opinions. Of course. But I think yeah. it's like an extension of like your vision is it like cheating to because in in like they use this kind of cameras to paint in like baroque times you okay. know with like these kind of antique i don't remember the name of them but they had these devices to project kind of images and that's also yeah. for example uh artists that use like a projector to project images onto a painting and then use that as a basis to paint, is that cheating? No, because you know, that's that's the that's the point. So I am lazy to take the camera or um, I don't know, use some filters to change uh, an image or to take some inspiration. So I'm gonna do drugs because I'm lazy to do that. It's like this for me. Why you don't why you don't uh, use those uh, uh, cameras or something? I don't know. That's that's uh, more interesting to uh, work with materiality. 
to take some more inspiration or uh, to spread your fantasy than do drugs, you know, what the fuck? Let's, okay, the only guy, oh, that's not drugs, that's uh, alcohol, but I think that- Alcohol is a drug for you, yeah. Okay, so uh, Bacon was, uh, I think that he didn't did such of things, such of good things without alcohol. I think so. But that's the only, the only artist I really support. Did Bacon do drugs? No, he was alcoholic. Yeah. So He's he was. So now we can't have wine at the studio anymore. Why? Because you stopped drinking. I know. Alma is on a health and fitness journey right now. So um, I have had to adjust my life to become more boring. <laughs> we're joking okay. around. We're, uh, we're accepting of all people and uh, ethnicities around the world. We're, yes. very, we're very politically correct. Okay, I have 10 minutes more, so maybe we can talk about all our plans for uh, other uh, podcasts. See what happens. Sandra, the podcast is called Kalecht Car Crash. We're figuring it out as we're going, aren't we? What the fuck? What, what, what are you saying? What do you mean? What are plans? We don't know. Oh, oh, that you mean. Yeah. We're going yeah. to interview a couple of more artists. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I would like to I speak with you about one idea I had. What do you think? Maybe we uh, also, we can, we can also talk with uh, uh, some directors we know. Which uh, directors do we know, Sandra? Uh, I know Mirvais. Oh, you mean movie directors? Movie directors, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But I just want to, I thought the plan was like to finish up interviews with every artist that's in the exhibition yeah. that do an interview with us. And of then course. we're going to like look at artists outside of the exhibition. Yeah. Belgian based artists that we want to have an interview with. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm like very, um, I, I would like to really spread the, uh, the uh, uh, theme of about like uh, art. Okay. Thema, okay. Mm -hmm. Theme. So I would like to spray that uh, because uh, I'm actually very interesting also in uh, cinema, uh, cinema making and also uh, photography and also, I don't know, uh, graphic design. Uh, or even or even interior design. I don't know. Everything's interesting. I think. No. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I'm we can convinced. also. What? I'm very convinced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we'll see where we head out. We we want to open up to more than just fine visual arts. Yeah. Actually, I'm very, I'm uh, very uh, waiting for our uh, uh, opening of exhibition. Actually, because uh, so time still, I think. You think? I hope. August. At eleven May, at eleven May, already uh, the uh, um, uh, shoppings are open. So, I think in July we can do an opening. I. I'm like I think in August. You think in August? Because we also. Oh have no! Not in August, please! Just not in August. Why? Because I'm, I'm not... moving out in August. I, I'm yeah. gonna go crazy. Just have Alex study another year. <laughs> oh my God! I'm gonna. No, I'm but gonna I just... think realistically, would like because we also want to be able for the artists to come to the exhibition and the opening. So we have to take into account that people have to be allowed to travel again. And then we also have to take into account that we want people to show up to the exhibition and not be afraid to come because I think it's already going to be hard to find an audience to come see the exhibition. 
So we want, I think we want to make sure that everybody who wants to come is not scared to come. And then we have to prepare and do another promotion campaign and print posters and all that stuff. So I think it will be, uh, I think we can, I hope that at the end of June, we will have some clarity on what will be or won't be possible. Mm -hmm. And then in July, prepare for the exhibition. And then middle of August, I hope that we will be able to start middle okay. of August, we will be able to have the opening of the exhibition. Okay. Maybe have yeah. it a little bit longer, make up for the time we lost. Um, yeah, we will see, of course. Then again, that's also the whole thing. Like, and that's what like um, our prime minister is very vocal about. Is like there aren't any certainties anymore. What is okay and possible today might not be possible anymore in two weeks. So we might like start preparing again at the end of June when they tell us like, oh yeah, you can open up again. But then by August they'll be like, oh no, everything's closed again. So I don't mm -hmm. know how well we'll be able to deal with it yeah yeah i don't know just uh just we need to wait and see how because it goes pity because like um what we can do is like as soon as they give us like okay you can do it again we can be like okay promotion opening in two weeks uh make it work but then it's like also have has to be so compressed and and we have to take so many things into account and like limit the amount of people that come and wear mouth mask and thing. I I was hoping to be more in a normal or what we perceived as normal situation, but maybe we have to adjust our idea about what is normal. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, what what is normal? I don't know. I don't know. Like we used to be able to speak to each other right next to each other and not wear mouth masks and have to wash our hands yeah. with everything we touched and be able to be in a room with a hundred people and not worry about it mm -hmm. and now we have to be like okay wear a mouth mask wash our hands not have any social very close contact anymore like how for me even i'm single what are we going to do with dating people like how can we meet new people also, how can we have sex with new people when we, like also gay culture is very like hookup minded. Yeah. And then how do you have hookups? Because a lot of gay people are still hooking up with each other and risking uh -huh. protection. Mm -hmm. And there's no condom to protect against uh, COVID. So of course, I was, what is going to be the new normal in this situation? I think we have to think about that. And that has to be figured out first before we can look at opening up the exhibition again. Yeah, I think we just uh, should wait till uh, the me medication. But how long is that going to take? And is that going to be a solution? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. think we can postpone the exhibition until May 2021. Hmm. You see, that's, that's actually, that's fucked up. Because you cannot uh, do normal things. Uh, but at the other side, I don't know. I uh, my life is actually completely changed right now. I don't know. I I even mention how I'm thinking, like in another way. Like I'm I'm more positive over uh, uh, about uh, about things that I do, uh, and I'm not so critic anymore for myself. Like I'm not pushing me into the perfection or something, you know, be, because I realize that the time I have right now is very uh, uh, dur. Uh, it's very Precious. yes. So that's why why I should I should spend time on like perfection or stressing about oh my god maybe i don't like i don't know french uh so i need to learn and i i don't know or i'm gonna get my master diploma and what the fuck i have no work and and so on and so on so i'm pushing me into the stressy uh, uh stressy way of thinking and now i'm like 
Okay, guys, I'm gonna just live how I can live, okay? I can do what, what I can do and I'm not gonna stress about that. That's all. <laughs> That's good. I'm the complete opposite. Like, I, I'm now, like, questioning everything. Like, what am or I doing as an artist? I'm doing nothing. Uh, Everything's stuck. I can't do anything. I'm, like, constantly worrying and, and like... I have very bad days. You know this because I yeah I, I know this. I have very bad days where I just completely stress out, and then I get depressed, and then I'm in a bad mood the entire day, and then I just want to like be like Sandra, I'm sorry, but I'm quitting the studio. I'm burning all my artworks, and I'm I'm going to like work in an office and make money because I because I can't work in an office because there because there aren't any jobs and. I have to figure out what I want to do with my life because it's not working as an artist. And then I get stuck in that for one or two days. And then, I don't know, I drink mm -hmm. enough to get over it. Really? No, I don't drink that much. But it's like very hard to get out of it. And then sometimes talking okay. to friends. I, I also feel like talking to friends helps like to get out of it. But I feel that I've been... I've had so many like bad episodes that people yeah. are like, okay, Dylan, like get over it. Like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That they like starting to think that you are just yelling bitch and that's all. Yeah, that I'm just like that. That it's like, oh my god, he's there again with his problems. Like, yeah, yeah. We've been over this, and that's. Uh, I, I'm I not think like this. I don't want to like burden people with my problems. But then again, they really help me, and I always tell them. But it's uh -huh. how I get stuck, and then I feel even worse because I can't talk to anybody anymore. I'm really like thinking how to help for artists. I don't. I I just can't imagine. I don't know what to do. How to help people who are who want to be artists but how just can we can't. How can help anybody when we're we can't even help ourselves? Yeah, that's true. I but but I think. In that way, we're like contributing, like we're doing something in ways that is possible for us. We can't help them with money. We don't have money, but yeah. we have a space. And as soon as we're open again, our space, we started the space with zero money from anybody. We don't have an income for the space. We don't make money off the space. We and just we paint our- To show work in the space. We're providing it for free to artists. Yeah, so I think that we're already helping there in the sense that even artists had it bad before Corona and now after Corona we'll have it worse, but we'll yeah. still be providing the same free space that we did before. And um, yeah, just we have these we have this podcast now where we're trying to like not a lot of people are watching it, but like artists can show like, oh, look at this podcast where I talk about my work and uh -huh. um, and it's maybe nice to put on their resume like I was interviewed for a podcast, even if it isn't popular, it always shows nice on paper. And then, um, yeah, all, we, we also told all the artists we have like in the show, like if there's something wrong, if you want to talk to somebody, you can always come talk to us. We, uh -huh. last week we had Florine and I think we cheered or we, like had a nice talk with her also yeah he, he was she she was really uh, happy actually to just to talk with somebody to get some feedback i don't know about yeah, she was, uh, she that she was a bit she lost her job uh -huh. uh, again and i saw it on instagram like a few days after the podcast and i texted her like don't worry everything will be fine look forward to your studio in bruges and the coffee we're going to have as soon as we're able to and and look forward to the good things. Yeah, I think you know what and really I, helped. I don't know, like depressed. But you know, you know what what actually really helps for all artists. I think just to be together. You know, to not to be alone. Yeah. If you deal with all those problems we like artists have, it's Maybe like start thinking about liking making a small. Like Bruyplatz did, and where I did my residency, oh. like because we we don't have a website because the website is on my website. So yeah. that's maybe, but we can like be like ask 
artists to have like a virtual exhibition in our space and then at least they can put it on the resume yeah that's an idea i think it can be but who's going to manage that because i'm working for school and working for my own practice and working for the boarding school and everything's going to open up soon actually i would actually i would like to do it but you know that i'm i hate computers and i don't just know how how the things work on computer and internet so i can do it i can try it i can learn to work with that but i don't know or it's gonna be good yeah i don't know okay we're going to uh say goodbye to everybody all right so thank you listeners uh i hope you enjoyed our first coffee break i really enjoyed that without water so i no i don't i don't know i it was uh, very interesting for me to discuss about our things i don't know i think it's quite uh, really me too hopefully we'll get to do it in person soon yeah yeah with, we can do uh, it at the studio and be like social distancing with professional mics maybe yeah but we don't have any so we'll have to look into a budget for that one <laughs> Okay, so we cut out another okay. part and uh, we're going to head off and do our thing. Okay, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed our first coffee break and uh, hope to see you soon. Or yeah, hope to soon. see you soon. Bye, listeners. Bye.